Okay. Uh, thank you, Eric, for that really uh, thorough introduction. And I want to also welcome everybody here today. And thank you for braving the heat and for, for uh, participating online as well. So I want to give a little bit more of a background to the Modern Code project. And uh, hopefully, that will be a good lead into what we're going to hear about for the, um, the rest of this symposium. So as Eric was saying, uh, way back in 2002, when we were anticipating the completion of the human genome sequence, we started to ask really in earnest, how can we read the human genome sequence? I like to say there is no instruction manuals. We really don't know the language rules for the human genome. And um, we know that evolutionary cons conservation can help to identify functionally important regions. About 5% of the genome is conserved, about 1.5% um, is coding protein coding. We were moderately good at finding these protein coding uh, regions, but the fine structures were difficult uh, to predict for, just from the sequence alone. We knew that regulatory regions can be very far away from genes, and so we felt we needed an unbiased experimental investigation to really try to uh, grapple with this, this challenge. And so we did start this project called ENCODE or Encyclopedia of DNA Elements. And the goal of this project um, is to compile a comprehensive encyclopedia of all the sequence features in the human genome and in the genomes of selected model organisms. As uh, Eric pointed out, we've, we felt that, that the use of, of these uh, model organisms is very important in being able to uh, understand biology and understand the human genome sequence. And the approach we took in the beginning of this project was to apply the lessons that we learned from the success of the Human Genome Project. We started with a well-defined pilot project, and we developed and tested high-throughput technologies. So as uh, Eric alludes to, there are uh, several components of ENCODE. We started uh, with back in 2003 with a pilot project focused on 1 percent of the human genome sequence, just to even see uh, how we could approach this problem, uh, how we would apply high throughput technologies to finding all the functional elements. And based on the success of that pilot project, we then scaled up to the whole human genome sequence in 2007. And then at the same time, that's when we initiated the Modern Code project to find all the functional elements in C. elegans and Drosophila uh, melanogaster uh, genomes. In 2009, with help from the Economic Stimulus ARA funding, we initiated a smaller effort in, in, modern, in mouse ENCODE, where we did a limited study, um, but really trying to find functional elements in the mouse genome and, uh, as a way that we could help uh, understand the human genome sequence. And throughout this whole effort, we have been working on technology development. We really needed new technologies, uh, new high throughput technologies that, that could be applied to really tackle this problem. And we've had a series of, of initiatives in that area. Most recently, we funded a group of proposals this past, past year. And interestingly, a number of the, the technologies that were developed early on were then implemented in the production activities. And we're looking forward to the next phase of ENCODE starting uh, this fall. And um, you can stay tuned for information about that. But those will include additional uh, data production where there'll be uh, a um, collapse of these projects into one large umbrella of, of uh, human and, and uh, model organism genomes, um, as well as spe uh, special data analysis projects. We're really looking at new ways that you can use the, the ENCODE data and the modern code data to understand um, genomes. So as, as Eric also mentioned in, in his slide of people standing on top of each other, these are really highly interactive research consortia. We have lengthy teleconference calls, actually a lot more than, than frequently than that. We have a number of working groups to address specific problems and issues such as data management resources and data release. Each of the projects have a data analysis working group. We have lots of um, annual meetings of, of the whole consortium as well as the analysis working groups. There are a lot of inter-consortia uh, collaborations that you'll hear about and also a number of consortia publications. We view the ENCODE projects as community resources, and so we really want to get all this information out to the researchers to, to use, the, uh, use as best as they can, especially for the understanding of the regulation of gene expression, as well as the genetic basis of disease, especially from the human data. Um, one of the hallmarks is rapid prepublication data release. Um, we also want to get the information out on how to use it through consortium publications. But the analysis of the data has required the development of common uh, data reporting formats, data standards, and analytical tools, and you're going to hear a little bit more about those um, later. We're very interested, as we said, in getting this data out to the community, and so we have a number of portals that you can use. The first to get, gain access to the human data is through this portal at encodeproject.org through the UCC um, group. 
Um, you can look, get the data from the UCSC browser. This is human and mouse, I should say, um, as well as Ensemble. The, all the data is being pushed out to NCBI. And you'll hear today more about the Modern Code uh, portal, um, moderncode.org, and the data is also going out to Flybase and Wormbase. So we're trying to make this data as accessible to the community um, as possible. The ENCODE pilot project, which I mentioned um, started in 2003, went to 2007, has published, uh, had published a um, large number of papers back in, in 2007, a large paper in, in Nature, as well as a number of, of companion papers, uh, including this one um, a whole issue in genome research devoted to um, the ENCODE project in the pilot project. And the ENCODE project now, this is all again focused in human, um, is planning to have a set of, um, large set of publications coming out early this fall, so I'll give, give you a heads up to be on the lookout um, for that. Modern Code Group has done a number of publications as well. Um, the group published a, what we call a marker paper back in 2009, and this was to inform the community about the plans for, for the Modern Code Consortium, um, what types of data there were, how to access the data, and, and really what, what the community can anticipate. And you're going to hear a lot more about the data, but I'll just highlight some of the features here. This is a figure from, from the paper that talks about data that you're going to, going to get on um, transcription factor binding sites, histone um, modifications, origins of DNA uh, replication, as well as um, extensive analysis of transcription. It's just a little preview of what you're going to hear about later. Um, back in 2010, in, in December 2010, there were a number of publications that have come out from the Modern Code Group. There were two papers in science, one focused on the integrative analysis of C. elegans uh, data, and the other focused on integrated analysis of, analysis of the Drosophila data. And with that as well were a number of companion papers um, in, in Nature, as well as this, uh, research, this genome research issue and in, uh, several other, other journals. Uh, and, you, and you're going to hear about plans for additional publications in the future. We're also trying to get the word out for uh, social media. Through social media, we have a uh, Facebook um, page now and uh, Twitter feed, and you can be following this, this um, symposium at um, ModSymp 2012. There are also efforts for education outreach. Uh, there are several uh, volunteer scientists from Modern Code and the Genomics Education Partnership who've teamed up with, with Science and AAAS to create an education website. And this is being led by Sally Elgin and Bob Waterston um, through Modern Code and by Laura Zahn and uh, Stuart Wills at, at uh, Science. And the target audience is really the general public but with a specific emphasis on high school students. And this is going to have six segments, which will provide a rich background on works in both fly and worm, including an introduction to chromatin structure and eukaryotic transcription, description of modern high throughput genomic technologies, as well as bioinformatics approach to data analysis. And uh, this is not live yet, but if you want to receive notification when the, data, the beta test site goes live, please e email Stuart Wills um, at this. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to memorize this address because there's a, a handout and a poster about this. Uh, website out in, in the front at the front desk. Okay, so today um, we are here to celebrate, as Eric said, the uh, completion of, of the mod this phase of, of the project, Modern Code uh, as an entity. has been a five-year project coming to a conclusion. We do want to showcase the, uh, the Modern Code findings and to celebrate the project. We're going to hear today about data access and data analysis. We're going to have two panel discussions uh, discussing the utility of modern code data for basic biological processes as well as human biology and disease. We have speakers from both within the modern code consortium as well as several outside speakers who have been using the modern code data. And um, we're, we're happy that this meeting was being held in conjunction with the uh, Genetic Society of America Model Organism to Human Biology uh, Cancer Genomics Meeting. We welcome those of you who attended that meeting who are are here um, as well. So there are a number of people um, to, to acknowledge from the Modern Code Consortium. There were 10 data production groups. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of all their, all their work and all the people, but you can see here that um, within each major project there were a number of, of uh, co-PIs of these projects. The, the main data production groups were Su from Sue Selniker's group, uh, Steve Hennikoff, Gary Carpin, Eric Lai, Jason Lieb. Uh, Dave McAlpine, Fabio Piano, Mike Snyder, Bob Waterston, and Kevin White. 
In addition, um, Manolis Callas has led, led the Data Analysis Center, and Lincoln Stein has led the Data Coordination Center. In addition to all the people listed here, there have been many additional senior scientists, postdocs, students, technicians, computer scientists, statisticians, and administrators from these groups. So it's been quite, quite a large effort. Here's a picture of many of them, and, and NHGRI would like to uh, thank uh, this whole group for uh, their very hard work in this, in this endeavor. It's been, been a lot of fun. I also want to acknowledge uh, my colleagues at NHGRI. I want to give um, particular um, uh, mention of Peter Good, who's been my collaborator in co-leading this uh, ENCODE and Modern Code effort for the past 10 years, and unfortunately he couldn't be with us today, um, as well as Mike Pazin, who, who joined us as a program director about 18 months ago. Um, special thanks also to our um, division director, Mark Geyer, who's been great help with um, guiding us through the management of this project and has been a very strong proponent of, of uh, the ENCODE and Modico projects. In particular, thanks to our program analysts, Leslie Adams and Caroline Kelly, who have been uh, really keeping us on, on track and, and have been an enormous help in, in helping to run this, these consortia. And I also want to mention some former program analysts, uh, Laura Leifen Leifer Dillon, who is here today, um, Rebecca Loudon, Jessica Malone, Judith Wexler, and Julia Zhang, who've been part of ENCODE and Monaco from, from the beginning. Okay, so does anyone have any questions? I think we have time for a couple. If not, we can move on to the next speaker. Okay. Okay, so thank you. So it's my pleasure to introduce the first speaker, um, Gus Micklem, who is director of the Cambridge Computational Biology Institute and is group leader in the Department of Genetics from the University of Cambridge, talking about modern code tools, data and tools for the community.